Okay, good morning students. So today we will do the third lecture, the third part of your social policy planning and development. And today we'll concern ourselves with rural development. Today we will learn how rural development is, um, you know, it has its nexus with social policy planning and development. Now this being the third class, I, I believe now you're already acquainted to what is social policy planning and development, or how it is related to, uh, you know, society's development and how we have like, you know, now for the past two lectures and now this being the third lecture, we have transitioned and seen how uh, the world or the international community is trying to contribute towards the upliftment of the society as a whole. And we've also seen in the present perspective how the the how uh, uh, the impact of COVID nineteen um, changed the economy of the world, and um, the, the most pockets of the world um, has had um, you know uh, received a severe blow, and how um, the international community got together and tried to devise policies, especially with the help of the UNO, and try to uh, you know come up with strategies and policies to combat the 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 severe impact of COVID-19 on the economy and till today we are trying to wriggle out and I believe in the positive in the positive note that it's we are going to entirely come out of it now well today we will learn what is rural development now there are just uh, like three of you in the class for now and uh, before we proceed further uh, I just like to remind you if you have any questions on your assignment uh, on assignment the mode of submission I'm talking about, feel free, free, please feel free to ask me any questions on that. Now, regarding rural development. So what is rural development? If any one of you could answer me. What is rural development? Being, um, you know, uh, uh, MSW students, I'm sure you, by now you must have heard rural development and, um, you know, how policies are strategized. I'm sure you have heard about it. What is rural development? Nadifo, can you answer me? What is rural development? Uh, rural development is, uh, uh, first of all, it is an uh, social and environmental viability of uh, nations. And uh, I think it is essentially for poverty eradication. Good. Okay, that's nice. Very good. Yeah, Deja. Yeah. Tell me. Tell me, Nadifa. Um, in my idea, rural de uh, development, we can say yeah. that the people who live there, uh, are they getting the basic needs like uh, basic social service, like education? health and water and like that. So that at that time, if, if they are getting all this social service mm -hmm. uh, in, in, their, in their area, they live in, so that we can say this uh, uh, the, in the way of development. Perfect. So very good answers, Abdinur and uh, Nadifo. So you are basically trying to say that it is development of certain areas which are sparsely populated that is which is less in population but it cannot be denied that it may be rich in natural resources and uh, it is for the development of uh, you know the poor who are not into the focus and how we uh, how we strategize to contribute towards their upliftment and bring them to the fore and making them join the the normal world. So basically, rural development, therefore, it you know speaks about development of rural areas or backward areas, which areas are mostly sparsely populated, that is very there are less in population, but it cannot be denied that, in my opinion, that these areas are rich in natural resources. 
So these people in rural areas, they thrive on those natural resources, but they do not have the, the basic understanding of the market outside. So what they do is probably they try to tap those resources and probably they're not even aware of them. Sometimes they are aware or they like, for example, farm produce, of course, they are aware, like, for example, cocoa bean and all those things or, or you know, coffee bean, they are aware and they try to sell it within their region. But once the, uh, you know, they are introduced to the world market. So that's how the 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 price factor increases and then they uh, they have this uh, you know the 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 government strategizes to create uh, employment opportunities for them set up a unit there tap those resources convert those resources and as a produce of that particular region they sell it in the you know say domestic market that is the local national market local market, national market, domestic market, and then after that, it, they also endeavor to export it outside to the other parts of the world. Like this, for example, if, if I say uh, here, for example, I, as I said, I live in UAE. If you see here in the markets here, you have, diff there is nothing that you will not, you will not find from any part of the world, any kind of product, it's available in the markets. It is just available. Even a, a, a product which is very rare and not easily found, you can find it here. Like sometimes, uh, like see different regions and different nationalities have different, uh, uh, you know, the, the ways of, uh, you know, you know, the eating habits are different or the, the, the things that they eat is different or even the fruits that are available in some part of the world is not available everywhere. Like in the same way, like, you know, here you find every fruit that is available in the market and it's, you know, it's labeled as this is from so-and-so place, this is from so-and-so place. And if you have even like, for example, any, any product, for example, you say, uh, you know, this is available from so-and-so region, you know, so you now, because of people who thought about rural development, all these strategies got together they are somewhere connected they're integrated and because of which today in advanced countries or even in developing countries you can find the products which once upon a time was not known but today you can find them i'm talking about farm product farm produce and so on now let us go through our slides and see how rural development is interconnected with social policy and planning. One minute. I don't know what these days I'm running it up for the meeting.
Uh, let me know when the screen is visible to you. Is the screen visible to you? Yeah, Teja. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. So here we will learn about social policy and rural development. Okay. In the first slide, as we can see, what is rural development? Now here the World Bank defines rural development as a process through which rural poverty is alleviated by sustained increases in productivity and income of low income rural workers and households. Now, this is the definition of rural development, which is given by the World Bank, where the World Bank has defined rural development as a process through which rural poverty is alleviated, where rural poverty is reduced or tried to uh, you know, they try to combat rural poverty by sustained increase in productivity and income of low income rural workers and households. Then we have by Elsminger, another person who has defined rural development and said that rural development is a process of transformation from traditionally oriented rural culture towards an acceptance and reliance on science and technology. Now, for example, we have this uh, farm farming. So where in rural areas, they might rely on, you know, man-made techniques or, you know, those traditional techniques or sometimes even indigenous techniques. So now they try to introduce science and technology so that the productivity would increase and the production also would increase. Next is rural development is improving the living standard of masses of low income population residing in rural areas and making the process of rural development self-sustaining. This is the definition given by Lele. And next is to improve Agarwal. There is an author called Agarwal and he said that rural development means to improve the economic and social life of a specific group of people, that is the rural people. He said what? He defined, simply defined rural development as to improve the economic and social life of a specific group of people, that is the rural poor. So this is the definition of rural development. Now, what is the transition? Like how it has moved on and to what stage or at what stage have we reached today? Now here, Societies across the globe have evolved today to be advanced. Now, this cannot be denied and have moved forward now to the next level. Now, the concept of rural development has undergone a drastic change in most pockets of the world where they have transitioned from the concepts of modernization or industrialization to a more balanced approach. Now, once upon a time, what used to happen was in the pursuit of rural development, strategists advise that we need to just now introduce modernization or industrialization, set up more industries, rural industries, or uh, keep uh, you know introducing new techniques of doing new things or tapping resources in the rural areas. So this is what they normally strategize. But today, we have evolved to the level that we believe, or even the strategists believe and policymakers believe, that it is not just uh, you know, modernization, introduction of modernization or introduction of industrialization into these rural areas, but we need a more balanced approach that is see all the other factors revolving around rural development. That is, it's just not introduction of techniques, but it's also about it's also about, uh, you know, development, uh, no, personal development of the people living in those rural areas. For example, example that I would like to give is like providing training to the rural youth, educating them about uh, how the how strategies are being devised 
what is the aim of those strategies and uh, what is the connection between those strategies and how it's going to impact them when it is being implemented where the particular area is at what level it is we are we the world outside first is in the regional at the regional level where it stands or at the domestic level first where it stands then at the regional level where it stands and then at the international level where it stands so when you educate the rural masses in my opinion about where they stand how they can improve themselves educating themselves uh, giving them personality development programs so apart from this modernization approach or industrialization approach a more balanced approach if they could really adopt including the factors that i just mentioned now i believe rural development can you know really progress at a faster pace and rural areas are like you know i don't think we are going to have any rural areas probably in in a, some more years to come but however again if you look at it another angle the already developed and advanced nations are going to go at a more advanced level so that means now this is something to think about that means those who are still less developed or underdeveloped or still at a developing stage they need to cope up with the advanced nations so that means there is a fear of this still being categorized as rural areas however if they meet the economic definition or if there is a uh, you know there is a economic definition or there is a kind of a parameter which says what is rural and what is not rural if there is a concise and a precise definition with respect to the economic factors or the economic level of a particular region and also with respect to industrialization so that means i think we could come to a level where there may be no rural areas but however as i said earlier the fear that they might still be categorically called as rural areas because the definition of advancement or the definition of development keeps changing and evolving as we move for, forward or as the society keeps evolving or as the world is you know continuing to grow and continuing to advance now if at all if you have any opinion to express you can just seek permission and of course we can have a uh, you know a small discussion on this as well next is it cannot be denied that rural industries did contribute to city based industrial structures by providing them raw materials and other core products that led to the amalgamated concept of industrialization now as i said earlier it cannot be denied that these rural areas are rich in raw materials they are rich in you know certain produce or farm produce or certain natural resources you know that are available only in these sparsely populated but yet they are rich in natural resources so these natural resources need to be tapped how you can tap them by introducing strategies by setting up uh, industries with modern techniques they may be rural industries but with modern techniques and then you tap those resources at at a uh, you know at a better pace at, at a faster level so that you can you know you know rotate to the market not just the local market or the domestic market but also to the regional level and also to the international level now what is the impact of rural development or how how, or how important it is like some of you in the beginning of the class like when i asked you what's rural development you yourself have you know you understood the importance and you try to define it in your own words now rural areas are normally seen as poverty zones uh this is what uh, adam said he he said that it's about the poor so rural areas are normally seen as poverty zones nevertheless in my opinion again it is in these zones that most of the natural resources are tapped and produced 
For example, agricultural products or employment opportunities in these areas are bound or they're actually really excessive. However, achieving the right price weighs away the cost is a matter of concern and that it is this factor that hits the productivity of a rural industry worker. So this is what I personally believe that employment opportunities in these areas, of course, are always there. However, the problem is achieving the right price vis-a-vis -vis the cost, like that is the labor that they put in because of the lack of uh, 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 the lack of uh, education that they might have or training in, in the right words that they might have because um, they may not understand the international market and they may not understand the, the, the other concepts, the economical concepts revolving. They might just see as a simple math. You understand? They, they might see just as a simple math and they might not uh, you know, price the product well. So achieving the right price with only the cost that is the cost of labor, the, the time that they're putting in is a matter of concern sometimes. And that is this factor that hits the productivity of a rural industry worker because he is not gaining much. He is not trained enough to take the produce outside the, outside the region also for that matter. So unless social workers, socially like you, and who involve yourselves in social policy making, by God's grace, you go up to that level and uh, be a policy maker, and then you come up with ideas and uh, you, know, you try to uh, make policies that will enable the rural uh, you know, youth to learn about pricing and cost factors in how you, with the help of your other team members, try to introduce those produce into the international market. And because of some people who have already done it, that's how we have international products available in the advanced uh, section or the advanced portion of the world. Now, enhancing, enhancing rural non-farm activities, that is RNFA, is yet another strategy adopted towards rural development. That is, they're saying that not just farming activities, but also we need to enhance rural non-farm activities. Then social policy, like for example, carpentry, non-farm activities, carpentry, someone is, you know, good, uh, a region is good in timber, and then they try to, you know, uh, the main, uh, say, occupation of a particular village is handicrafts making, or they, you know, have, they're good in carpentry. So, you know, taking it to the next level, not just farming activities, but enhancing in RNFA, that is rural non-farm activities, is yet another strategy that can be adopted towards rural development. <clears throat> next is social policies in such areas play an important role in harmonizing the available resources with activities and employment on one hand and the economical advantage on the other. So therefore, they play a very important role in, in harmonizing or you know, bringing about the marriage of the resources that is available along with the activities that are revolving around these resources, which gives employment on one hand, and, and on the other hand, you know, increases or, uh, you know, gives an economical advantage on the other. Next is, there is this article by Tony Killick in 2001 titled Globalization and Rural Poor. You can Google it out. And it's also mentioned in your textbook. There is a passing reference made to uh, in your textbook by the author. Now, here, an article by Tony Killick in 2001 titled Globalization and Rural Poor emphasized on the impact of globalization on the rural poor, stressing but the importance of international market access for rural produce. So this one way back in 2001, he stressed about the importance of international market access for rural produce. Next is combating mm -hmm. rural poverty with modernization is one of the strategies adopted and policies are devised in that direction. So today we can see that this has become, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, Nadifo. Yeah, teacher, and 
Can I ask you for a question for the slide before? Sure, sure. Tell me. Yeah. When when it comes uh, the price, I don't know. In in, in our country, mm -hmm. we still we have not a huge, or our government has not reached enough. So, I don't know in the where you live. Does mm -hmm. the government set the price? I mean, price ceiling for the local production. Yes. As to not as to not miss this this people or rural area or for the local productivity right to i be, understand be, what you're trying to say mm -hmm. tell me tell me yeah to be something in does the have uh, i mean have meaning for the society mm -hmm. okay so i understand so that, what, that yeah. the government set the price the price or or not uh, that, my question is like that oh. for this local production okay Okay, so what you can do is, a minute, what you can do is now see, now people like you can play an important role in the, for the question that you have asked me. So people like you can play an important role. If, that's what I said earlier. If by God's grace, you reach up to that level into policy makers, yeah, I just can put down your hand, into policy makers and so on. Then later on, what would happen? You would also be a policy maker. You would, you know, interact with others, you know, like you across the globe. And then you could devise strategies and you could implement it into your own personal region with respect to pricing and all that. So that's how education plays a very important role. And training plays a very important role interacting with someone outside your region, outside your, your city or outside your region, outside your nation, it plays a very important role. And above all, again, I would like to reiterate that education plays a very important role because when you start you know, studying these things, you start you know, gaining a leverage and then there is a possibility of you moving out of those zones, those regions, and then exploring things outside and coming back and implementing it into your own areas. Are you understanding? Sometimes you might become a social policy maker. You might even go to the level of ministry. So who makes the laws? It is, of course, the ministers, the legislature. The legislature makes yeah. laws. Yeah. So yeah. If yeah. yeah. So if you come up to that level, so they, they, you will have a team, you know, there'll be a group of people who will be supporting you. And then, of course, there will be various studies and researchers which will go on. And with the help of that, you know, gathering the, uh, the material that is available with you as of that particular date, that is the new date, of course, the present current date, which, whichever date you're working or you've called for the research, in that way, you can implement and devise strategies, whatever is applicable for that particular point of time. So this is how a change is brought about. Are you understanding? So we have to reach to that level. We need to reach to that level. And then we can bring about a change. If not we, someone around us. So that is the reason we... we study a subject of interest and whatever is planted in our heart we go and implement it outside for the best interest of the society See, society is interdependent all professions are interdependent and that's why education plays a very important role just to put it simply for example if you have doctors in your region if you have lawyers in your region just to give you a simple example Suppose a lawyer falls very, very sick. So who helps the lawyer is a doctor. Suppose the doctor, uh, you know, commits an offense or there is a case against him or he is driving the, and, you know, he has hit someone or he has, uh, you know, destroyed someone's property. So again, there is a case against him. So who comes to his rescue is a lawyer. So society is interdependent. Now, who helps in the development of the societies? All these people together. 
So what has helped them to come to that level is education. Now you have even the, you know, you have the farmers. They play a very important role because the things that they understand, you and me don't understand. So the world and the society needs to understand one important thing that everybody is contributing towards the development of the society. Be it a farmer, be it a cleaner, be it a doctor, be it a lawyer, be it an engineer, be it a social service worker, be it a, you know, a, an executive a person of an executive body or say, a, you know, a government person or maybe a police, a person from the police department who sees to the peace of the society around you, who sees that the laws are implemented and he assures, the police department assures that there is peace and security in a region. So all these people are working towards the advancement of the society in one way or the other. They're supporting each other. And therefore, nobody is higher than the other, but they all walk hand in hand towards doing the best in society. And they knowingly or unknowingly, even sometimes if they forget it, if they are oblivious of the fact that somewhere or the other, they are contributing to us a society. So therefore, education plays a very important role. So for that, interest has to be taken. Just by attaining degrees, nothing is going to happen. A person needs to have interest in having the knowledge of the subject and how the person can bring about a change. For example, even if a person does not have an interest, just, you know, uh, to by the operator stretch of imagination, say a student does not have an interest at all. Even if you don't have an interest, knowingly or unknowingly, somewhere you end up contributing to the society when you take up a job of your particular profession or whatever you have studied, and somewhere you are contributing to the society in some way or the other. Are you understanding me? So I'll go to the next now. The next slide. Just in case this gets dis disconnected, just hold on. I'll connect again, okay? And again, rejoin me. So we were here today. We can see that this has become a reality to some extent where we are introduced to new agro-product or even rural products which were not easily known or introduced in every nook and corner of the world. And this has been possible only through strategically devised and implemented social policies. So what's the importance of social of uh, sorry rural development is as discussed earlier rural areas in any given territory for that matter are dominant in natural resources so identifying tapping these resources with the rural workforce as a resource now workforce or people also are a resource so tapping the natural resources with the help of workforce as a resource creating employment opportunities contributes towards rural economy Next is the origin of this approach that is SLF, Sustainable Livelihood Framework. There's something called a Sustainable Livelihood Framework, also called as SLF. And this was actually propounded by the World Commission on Environment and Development, WCED 1987, where sustainable livelihood is defined as adequate stocks and flows of food and cash to meet basic needs. So here we can remember the term sustainable development. What is sustainable development? Meeting the needs of the present without compromising the needs of the future. This is the definition of sustainable development. You go a step ahead and define sustainable livelihood here. So livelihood is defined as adequate stocks and flows of food. That means sufficient stock, sufficient stock of food and cash to meet your basic needs that is sustainable livelihood to come to the level of sustainable livelihood that means a society has enough of food enough stock of food and enough stock of cash for the present need to meet the current basic needs so the dimension of capabilities were also added to this definition by chambers and conway 1992 so they said it's not just adequate stocks and flows of food and cash to meet the basic needs but it is also you have to look to the factor of capabilities. So this factor, the dimension of capabilities was added to the definition by Chambers and Conway 1992. Therefore, SLF or Sustainable Livelihood Framework is an analytical device, which that device that is a device which is used for analyzing or for analysis to understand the complex interaction of factors that condition 
people's livelihood that conditions you know that that helps to smooth people's livelihood and the standard of living are proposed that is with regards to poverty thereby slf is a dynamic representation of an iterative process of variables such as human capital natural capital financial capital physical capital and social capital on one hand and the channelizing that's how you wrote it the channelizing impact on the livelihood outcomes to the structural mechanisms such as NGOs or the government, legal institutions, and so on. So out of all the factors, the key is development of whom? Of people. And that is the core aim of rural and social development. Uh, again, repeating. So of all the factors, the key is the development of people. And that is the core aim of rural and social development, thereby beneficiary participation beneficiary means the one who benefits who benefits is the people the society the masses so thereby beneficiary participation is a significant variable